Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Must Love Labs. My name is Alan. On this channel we talk about tips and tools for how to raise, breed, and sell Labrador Retrievers as quality family pets. So if you're new here, you might consider subscribing. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to start a breeding program. Now in my last video, we talked about buying some dogs. So I'm going to make an assumption that you have bought some dogs or you're at least thinking about buying dogs. So you went and got some dogs. You either got uh, a puppy or maybe a couple of puppies, a male and a female, or perhaps you bought some adult dogs. Uh, either way, the first thing you're going to want to do is get them chipped. This is the only way that you can prove that that's your dog. Um, heaven forbid they get stolen or an ownership issue comes up. Uh, that chip is going to be what decides who gets to keep the dog. That's how that works in most places. So first things first, get your puppies or your adult dogs, whatever you bought, get them chipped. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is getting your dog's DNA tested. Now this can be done after the puppies are two weeks old. And you can also do it with adults and everything in between. But you're going to want to get your dog's DNA tested. Uh, you can Google that. There's plenty of services out there that will handle that for you. Uh, i got a couple listed here. Paw Prince does it. Uh, Embark does it. And what they're going to do is they're going to send you a, a, a home collection kit, a little swab in the mouth, and you fill it out and send it back. And they can test your dogs for breed-specific genetic issues uh, that possibly shouldn't be passed on through breeding. And this is how you can verify you've got good breeding stock. The last thing in the world that you want to do is, is, is genetically pass on something that, that's going to be problematic or something that people don't want to have. It's all part of being a good quality breeder. So genetic testing. All right, moving right along. The next thing I want you to think about is the age of your dogs for breeding. Now, I work with Labradors, and as we've said before, I'm going to tell you what it is that I do uh, and what works for me, and you can take that information and, and make good decisions for what you're doing and, and, and the breeds that you're working with and so forth. Uh, but for, for my labs and, and for most females that I'm aware of, they need to be two years old before you let them breed. Now, nature's going to want to do that a lot earlier. Most females have their first heat cycle in the first nine months. Um, but they're adolescent dogs, they're youngsters. In human terms, it would be like letting a teenager get pregnant. Okay, they're, they're not ready, they're not ready emotionally. Um, so if you've got female dogs that are two years old, your vet will then certify them for whether or not they're good for breeding, good to go for breeding, there'll be a physical that they get. And you can take that information with your genetic testing if you're dealing with a large breed dog, you're going to want the OFA certification. That's where they check the hips and the elbow joints uh, and, and give them those certifications as well so you're not passing on things like hip dysplasia. Uh, so you've got a two-year-old dog now. She's had genetic testing. Uh, she's had the, the OFA checks if she's the right breed dog that needs that. And, but then she's emotionally ready at two years old for being a, a, a mama dog. Uh, the mama dogs, you rely on them 100%. Newborn puppies are, are completely reliant on their mothers for everything. First couple of weeks, the only thing that works on a puppy is their sense of smell. That's all they've got. Mama dog does everything for them. They can't even regulate their own body temperature. Mama dog has to do that too. And she does it just fine if she's emotionally ready to be a mama dog. See where this is going? Somebody's going to have to feed these dogs. She even licks their bellies to help them have their first bout movements and their first urinary tract flow. Uh, she does everything for them. And a good mama dog will, will be ready for this emotionally. Um, and that happens at about two years of age. Now, if you let them get pregnant before then, all those things that I just mentioned, maybe she'll be ready for that, maybe she won't. There's also a possibility of having problems with the litter, problems with the pregnancy. So you can avoid all that by letting mama dog get physically and emotionally mature. And for most breeds, that's right around two years. Now for the males, same thing. You can't get the OFA check on the hips and whatnot until they're two years old. 
Now, if you're dealing with a breed that doesn't have to have that, maybe some of the smaller dogs, and maybe you can bypass that a little bit. Uh, the males are fully functional by the time they're, you know, nine, 10 months old. Uh, they can get it done, uh, but they're, they're still adolescent dogs as well, and uh, you won't have been able to get the, the hip certifications that you would need with some breeds. So for Labradors, which is what I'm doing, uh, two years is the benchmark for, for the dam and the sire. The male and the female need to be two years. Um, and then once everybody's uh, uh, health checks have gone through and the vet gives a thumb up, then you can start thinking about uh, uh, catching the next heat cycle for your female after she's two years old. For some dogs, this is gonna be cycle number three. That, that's very normal. Okay, I'm glad you're watching the video and I'm glad you're hanging in there and learning about breeding dogs. And do me a favor, if you're getting value from this video, hit that like button for me. It really does help us out quite a bit. And also, if you're interested in supporting our channel, we've got a Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description. You can stop by and check out a t-shirt or a coffee mug. And we appreciate you doing that in advance. Okay, so we're talking about heat cycles here. Now, most of your female dogs are going to come into heat every six months. That's, that's normal. It, it can vary, but uh, once every six months is normal. And um, there's about a nine week gestation period. So when you're planning when you want to have puppies, this is going to be dependent on when your dog starts coming into heat. When your female comes into heat, the male is always ready. Okay, it's the female's cycle that requires some timing. So um, nine weeks after she breeds, she's going to have puppies. The gestation period is nine weeks. You can kind of remember that as they're, they're canines. That, that's not actually what that's about, but it fits. Uh, so nine week gestation period and then you get puppies. Her heat cycle will come on and it runs for three to four weeks for most dogs. Um, she'll be most apt to get pregnant right when she ovulates. Um, experienced male dogs will just smell this. They'll just know when it's time. Adolescent male dogs will be chasing your female around the entire time she's in heat because they don't understand this yet. Uh, if you want to bypass that, uh, your veterinarian can run a series of tests when it gets close and tell you exactly when she's ovulating. Uh, you'll spend about 30 or $40 for each one of those tests, by the way. Um, so, for instance, if you're going to outsource your stud situation, if you choose not to have a resident stud dog and you're going to outsource this and, 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 and purchase that from someone else, perhaps another breeder that you like their stud, uh, you'll negotiate a price with them. Uh, typically that's going to be about equivalent to what one of the puppies would sell for and or per pick of the litter. And um, most of the time they just want the cash. Uh, and then there's a, a fee for their vet to collect this sample. They'll ship it to your vet. And there's another fee for your vet to artificially inseminate. You can do it that way. It's a couple hundred bucks on each end. Or you can get together and try and get two stranger dogs to breed. Um, I'm personally never going to do that. I don't want somebody stranger's dog coming over and, and trying to breed with my female. I've seen videos where people do this, um, and I'm not knocking anybody that wants to do that. That's their business, but that's not me. I've got a resident stud dog, um, and if I wanted to bring in a different bloodline that way, then uh, I, I would find a donor somewhere and, uh, and let the veterinarians do artificial insemination. That's how I would handle that. Now, when your dogs are breeding, if you've got a resident stud dog, or even if you're, you're bringing one in um, uh, to come in and, and, and manually breed, um, every other day is recommended. You don't want them to do it every day because the male's sperm count will get diluted. Um, uh, you want his sperm to be good and potent, and uh, you have a better chance for, uh, uh, for good conception and, and, and better litter numbers. Uh, when he's not exhausted. So every other day is recommended to let them breed. And just so you know, some people are working with breeds. Uh, again, I've, I've seen videos and, and heard conversations where these people are literally in the pen helping them, you know, and, and maybe there's breeds that need help. <laughs> I don't know, but I can tell you that that's not going to be me. If they need my help, I'm not interested in breeding them, okay? 
my Labradors, all they need me to do is give them a place where they can have some privacy and just a few minutes of time and they go and get it done. Uh, and you'll, you'll look out the window, they'll be chasing each other around one minute and you check back on them and they're sitting out there with their butts. They look like they're stuck together and they're just sitting there smiling. Uh, and this is when they're, this is when they're locked up. Um, and that's actually when conception happens, people. Uh, you don't want to separate these dogs. You don't want to disturb them. You don't want to bother them. You want to let them stay locked up because that's when the, the sperm is transferring and, and conception is going to happen. So let nature take its course. They'll come apart when they're ready to come apart. And uh, it's been my experience that they, they really don't need your help with that, uh, with any part of it, in my opinion. Now, again, I know there's people that are working with breeds that uh, maybe they need a little help. There's a height issue or something. I don't know. I'm working with Labradors. I, I personally wouldn't work, want to work with a breed that, that required my assistance that way. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in being that involved in the process. But, you know, to each his own. If you want to go that route, more power to you. Okay, I want to talk to you just a little bit more about timing. Um, as we mentioned, these dogs come into heat about once every six months. That's pretty regular. Um, if your dog's coming into heat at such a time where uh, nine weeks later, you're not going to want to have puppies at that time, like maybe it's the dead of winter or maybe it's the middle of the summer, and you're going to be on vacation or something, you're in control of this. Uh, you just have to keep your male and your female separated if you have a resident stud dog. Uh, your female, for sure, you've got to make sure no other dogs in the neighborhood can come around and, and give you uh, half your dog and half whatever other breed. Um, so you got to look out for your females. And, and I can tell you that um, the, the, the breeding instinct, instinct is real strong for these dogs. Um, so you, you literally have to keep them in a, a kennel uh, or a crate when you're not there to supervise them. Um, it doesn't take long. A couple of minutes and they will get it done people um, and where this becomes a, a real challenge is when you have more than one female if you have a resident stud dog then everybody gets a turn in the kennel they cannot be outside uh, even if you're supervising them they'll get it done fast I mean you'll be running across the yard trying to pull them apart uh, and, and I would <laughs> I would spare you that and develop a system where they can share time in and out of crates and kennels and you can keep them separated that way um, in fenced yards that are uh, uh, the fence is high enough to where dogs can't jump over and you know nobody's digging under it that kind of thing and especially when your females in heat you've got to keep an eye on her okay so let's summarize microchips DNA testing making sure that your dogs are the right age, the male and the female, deciding if you're gonna use your stud dog or if you're gonna outsource your stud dog and exactly how you're gonna go about accomplishing that, and then learning about your female's heat cycles and developing some timing strategies so that she's having puppies when, when it works out best for you. Now, there's only so much you can do with that, but you get what I'm saying. When you think about all these things, once you develop a system, and I suggest you do this with just one female for a couple of litters of puppies, you work the bugs out of your system, you develop a strategy where these things can play out the way you want them to, and you get comfortable with it, and then you can bring in more dogs and scale it up if that's what you want to do. Uh, start slow, start small. We talked about that in the, in the last video and uh, keep all your mistakes you know, small, non-fatal. Um, get a system going that works good for you, um, and then you can ramp it up a little bit and bring in some more dogs once you have a system in place, and you'll do just fine. Well, that wraps up our third video in the series, How to Become a Dog Breeder. Uh, there's a lot of things to talk about, and I know we're not talking about everything. Uh, if there's certain questions that you'd like some answers to, feel free to leave them in the comments section and I'll try to get back with you as soon as I can. Do me a favor and hit that like button if you got value from this video. And you definitely want to subscribe to my channel because I will be making additional videos on this topic and others. And thanks again for stopping in to Must Love Labs. We'll see you in the next video.